this would be the time where you would go in and do all the fine tweaks to your track. And if you really wanted to, you could, you know, add EQs to everything and kind of try to mix it all together. But for the sake of example and just having fun and creating something, I'm not going to spend the time to do that. Now is when we're going to get ready to export this thing. So there are a few steps that you need to take, one of which you maybe would have wanted to do from the very beginning. So I feel bad that I'm only mentioning this now, but we need to pull back in the length of the track. By default, they give you like really long tracks, like five and a half minutes, five minutes. And so when you're working, you know, and you're working with the zoom here, you're only in like the first little half of your track that you're working on. So really what you'd want to do is go to the end here and if I can get this to pull all the way out, we're just gonna drag this back in towards near the beginning of our track. And now you'll notice that probably working with the zoom would have been a whole lot easier throughout our entire process. So hopefully you've made it to the end watching this and maybe before you get started, you'll actually pull this back into something like reasonable. You can always stretch it back out. So you don't have to feel like once you've gone in a little bit, you're not gonna be able to pull it out. It can be a little bit finicky to get it to go back but eventually you will be able to pull that and drag it if your song ends up going longer than what you originally anticipate. Uh, so again, that will make it easier when you're dragging this thing around and trying to get into particular zoom ranges and the like. So let's figure out where this track is gonna end in a good way. I'll just go back from here. We have a delay at the end of it, so I wanna try to snap this in. I'll probably choose a finer resolution. Let's see, where is this going to end? So probably a little bit after that 45, we'll get everything that we want. I'll just bring it into about there. So the length of that is, it looks like around 146. Okay, so that's perfect. We're in business now. We have our endpoint set where we want it to be set. The next thing I'm going to do is kind of check levels. Now, when you're playing through, anytime you have a meter and you see a mixer, you want to be watching that very closely to make sure that you're not peeking out and going into the red. Now, you're going to be fine really on output because you are running into a limiter at the end stage but you know red is dead so you want to try to avoid any clips whenever possible because in some sense you are kind of compressing your audio signal inside of soundation they have a very like transparent sounding limiter that allows you to work at super loud levels without even feeling like you're losing that much dynamic range with audio tool the limiter that they have in here is not as transparent and so if you push it too hard you can actually hear it like clamping down on your signal and you might notice that when you're making your track if you're like coming in here and you turn off the limiter it will tell you when you are clipping so what i'm going to do is go to kind of like the loudest point in the track or what I think is the loudest point in the track and I'm going to watch this with the limiter off to see if we are going into the red at all I've set my final output level to minus 0.2 just to be safe and I'm just going to listen here and see what's going on with the meters at the final out so it looks like we're very safe here All right, so this is telling me a couple of things. One, it's telling me that we are totally safe. We are not doing any clipping, and if it's not clipping there, it's probably not clipping anywhere earlier on in the track. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drive the level into this thing. And you can do this in a variety of ways. We could actually take the output here and kind of drive that up if we wanted to. But I'm kind of happy with how this is all working. So the way I've been doing things in Audio Tool, and I've only been doing it for a short amount of time, so I'm not an expert. But what I'd probably do is actually go in and use the graphic EQ as a means to boost the signal level. Because this gives me a gain control that can easily go like up and down and it can go very high up and down. So I can go all the way 18 dB up or I could cut it down if I was like really too loud. Again, you'd want to fix that beforehand. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take the output of this mixer stage. And I'm going to run that into the EQ. 
And then from the EQ, I'm going to run out into our final master. So one thing I might also try is to maybe like boost the low end and boost the high end a little bit, not by a lot, just kind of a touch. The one thing is this track is a little bit dull. So I probably would go up here and we'll zoom really close so we can see the frequencies. Maybe I'll choose something like, I don't know, 15 K thereabouts and just give this a very small gain probably not more than a db and i'm going to uh bring the q of this way down okay so you can see that band kind of increasing and then on the low end i might do kind of the same thing one other option we have is we could put a filter here at the beginning in fact that is what i'm going to do and the reason i'm doing this is just because i don't want anything in the low end that's like below our range of hearing and or something that's going to make a speaker not work very efficiently. You don't have to worry about doing this on your own track. I'm just doing it as kind of a habit. So I'm going to bring this up to around 30 or so. That should be fine. That way, when I go in here and I'm kind of boosting the sub range, we shouldn't have a problem because we're already filtering everything before that. All right. So that's kind of the idea. So I'm going to go and let's choose a frequency. If I was really smart, what I would do is I'd actually check the frequency calculator that we looked at before and figure out where like the lowest F is on there. That's still within our range of hearing. And I'd boost around that area. Uh, but for this example, let's just say like 80, that's fine. And again, we'll probably just go about one DB, bring this way back. And so we have like a little bit of a curve that's shaped like this. All right. The old smiley face curve. Maybe I'll bring this up so you can see the smiley face a little bit better. That's kind of the idea, uh, but I'm going to be pretty subtle with it. And then what I'll do at the end here is I'm going to drive this into the uh, final master output until I actually do see a little bit of clipping. And then once I see that clipping, I'll turn the limiter on, make sure that I don't really hear the limiter too much. And then I know that I'm good to go and it's pretty loud. This is going to be a really dynamic track anyway. The beginning is a lot quieter than the middle sections, but I'm okay with that. You know, we're not trying to go for some kind of like billboard top 100, 200 release. So this is not something you even have to do. It's just something I'd kind of encourage so that your sound is about as loud as other people's. Um, the beautiful thing about audio tool is it encourages you to work at lower levels where I feel like soundation is almost like just baiting you into crushing the heck out of your sound. So let's go back to where we were playing before. I'm just going to drive this gain. Right for that dramatic gain increase it's quite a bit and in fact what it ends up doing is it makes that baseline synth we had sound like really harsh so i'm actually probably going to take away this gain or i'm going to put it just like really low on the top end what i would probably do after making that change is listen to the whole track and hear if there's anything um, that really then starts to stick out and sound annoying because we've put so much gain back into it. But again, for our time here, we're just going to go ahead and say this is about fine. Maybe I'll drive the gain up like a touch more, but not a whole lot. I don't want to ruin anything. So now that that's done, we'll go ahead here and make a final save. And then after that, we can go ahead and choose to publish. So I'm just going to leave this named Brian example and allow others to remix, allow others to download. I'll just turn both of those off for now and I'll go ahead and click publish. So once that's done, we can go to our final track and take a listen to it if we want. So let's kick back and hear what we've come up with. Mm -hmm. 